This is Pocket Watching with JT. Hey, Pocket Watchers. Welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. I am certified financial planner, Jason Thornton. I am a financial advisor that specializes in tax and wealth planning for my clients. But on YouTube, I react to your money questions and scammer news. Now, listen, I got to give each and every one of the Pocket Watchers a big shout out. I recently hit over 10 million views. Now, that is a big achievement for me because I do not have one viral video, right? When I say that, I mean, I do not have a video that has a million views or 800,000 views or whatever. I, the most views that one particular video has as of today is 180,000 views. So to go over 10 million views, it's because of the pocket watches. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much for supporting my content. Do me a favor, hit the like button, share this content. We're going to have some fun. All right, so here we go. What are we talking about tonight? Tonight, we are talking about these two. Caesar Pena and DJ Envy. The question that I'm asking is, how did an ex-con build a multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme? Allegedly. Allegedly, this guy, Caesar Pena, built a multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme, even though he is an ex-con. Now, I did a video a few months ago, right here. I did this video a few months ago, and we really were breaking the story of this thanks to Tony the Closer and Eli from What Happened to Common Sense. And we, when we did it, now listen, when we did it, uh, not a lot of people were talking about this story, but a lot of people are talking about the story now, right? A lot of people. You have major news networks that are talking about this story. But I want to be clear. I want to be crystal clear. This story would not be out the way it is if it was not for two people. Number one, Tony the Closer Robinson and Eli from What Happened to Common Sense. When they came out, with these allegations, when they were hearing from these alleged victims of what happened to them in these extremely bad real estate deals, it wasn't popular. In fact, I know personally that both of these men were attacked and even threatened because they were allowing the victims of this situation to have a platform and to be heard. So while everybody else is talking about this story now, we have to give credit where credit is due. It's because of these two that the story got out when it came out. Now, I also want to give a shout out to the big homie and a friend of Pocket Watching with JT, Spencer Cornelia. Thank you so much. This is a guy who saw my content early on he featured some of my content in one of his videos. Then he even collabed with me. He recently came out with this video, the DJ Envy and Caesar Pena scam just got worse. Now, a link to this uh, video right here, a link to this video will be in the, in the description of my video, right? It'll be in the description of my video. So I, I'm telling you, if you have not heard about this story, Go watch this particular video because he lays it out from beginning to all the way up to today. So go check that out. But for those of you who have no idea what's going on, I'm going to show you a clip of that video now. On October 15, 2018, The Breakfast Club introduced Cesar Pena, a relatively unknown real estate investor in New Jersey, onto the show as a featured guest. Recent lawsuits have been filed against Cesar and DJ Envy alleging a Ponzi-like investment scheme that has taken millions from investors. It all started with this interview. We got a special guest in the building. 
You might know him on Instagram as Flippin' NJ. My friend sees opinion. Five years later, numerous customers allege they were defrauded by Caesar. Over the past five years, DJ Envy has promoted Caesar as a real estate expert and trustworthy source for learning the game. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. Flippin' NJ. DJ Envy and Caesar's partnership seemed innocent until Tony the Closer began receiving messages about investors giving the two money and not receiving any money back. <laughs> you have a criminal record, but your criminal record actually got you into this business. Credit yeah. card scams, right? Credit card yeah. scams. Yeah, so before that, that I, from the age of 16 on, I was selling drugs. Back then, I thought nothing was going to happen. It was a white collar crime. And I've done so much other things worse than that, right? <laughs> At that point, I'm like, oh, this is, this is nothing. So many people were like, yo, don't mess with him. He's a, he's a con. He's a, he's a felon. He, he's a criminal. He's a this. He's a that. You know, don't mess with him. All right, real quick, before we go any deeper into this story, I want to have a conversation, right? We need to have a real conversation about second chances, all right? Now listen, in the United States of America, we pride ourselves on giving people second chances. We are the land of opportunity, right? This is a place where you can reinvent yourself and I'm proud of that. I champion that. I would not want to live in a world, in a country, in a society where your past mistakes keep you 100% from being able to move forward, to do good in this world, and to live out a happy life, right? I, I just got to say that. I would not want to be in a world where you could not reinvent yourself, where you could not have a second chance. But a second chance within reason, okay? Within reason. Let, let, let me explain what I'm talking about here. See, getting the opportunity to have a second chance is not something that's guaranteed, right? It's not guaranteed. But when you are offered a second chance, you have to take advantage of it. But I will say this, while I do not want your past mistakes to keep you from being able to live out a good life in the future, actions have consequences. Let me say that again. Your actions have consequences. There are certain things that you can do in your life that you will never be able to get past. There are certain things and mistakes and errors that you will make that will continue to have an impact into the future. Let me give you guys a few examples. All right, just a, just a few examples. So here we have this gentleman right here. He goes by the name Brother Polite. His real name, I believe, is Michael Eugene Noak Jr. Now, Brother Polite recently pled guilty to some very, very ugly charges. Right here, they're on the screen. They're on the screen. It says child abuse, you know, uh, you know, aggravated bodily harm, torture to a victim, right? To a victim who was a child, female child victim. These are the things that he pled guilty to. Now, he pled guilty and he was sentenced to seven years imprisonment. And then after that, 10 years of supervision, right? Some of you will understand that when a person goes through their punishment, they go through the system. When they come out of the system, they should be they should be given an opportunity to move on with their life. I support that. But here's the thing that I want you to focus on. Actions have consequences. When I listened to the judge when Brother Polite was being sentenced, I heard a couple of things that were a bit alarming. Number one, even after Brother Polite gets out of prison, in seven years, he is not allowed to have 
unsupervised uh, access to children. Just think about that. Even after he gets out of prison, he is not allowed to have unsupervised access to children. So I don't want to hear about, hey, he did his time. He is rehabilitated. He's a changed man. All of that is good. And really, you know, uh, uh, there's a piece of me that says, hey, I want him to be able to move on with his life if he does all the things that he needs to do. But listen, he's not about to be my babysitter anytime soon. And I'm sure he's not going to be your babysitter anytime soon because he's not allowed to, number one, right? It would be against the court's rules for him to be around children unsupervised. Why? Because the actions that led to this have consequences, right? I even heard the judge say that I believe he is unable to take on certain employment, right? He is unable to take on a job that would require or give him the ability to have a uniform. Why? Because a uniform brings on a certain sense of authority. And if he, let's say, for example, became a security guard at a school, the court wouldn't like that because he would have a level of, of authority around children, and it could lead to him going back to his old bad behavior that led to all of this, right? So while he can do his time, he can become reformed, there are certain things that he is not able to do for the protection of the greater society. And I support that. He should never be alone with any children for the rest of his life, clearly, because this is what happened when he was alone with a child. Can't have that happen again. Got another example for you. Here we have Mr. Jermaine D. Morrison. Now, Mr. Jermaine D. Morrison, he is a self-proclaimed three-time felon. And I believe he said that the felonies that he was uh, found guilty of were drug-related felonies. I believe he also said that he sold his own father crack cocaine. I believe he said that too. But I, I'm aware that the three felonies that he had were drug-related felonies. He's also a high school dropout. Now, based on that information, there are certain professions that he cannot engage with. One of those is becoming a certified public accountant because the AICPA states that a person with the criminal history of a Jermaine D. Morrison is unfit to hold the title of a CPA, to be entrusted to give people certain accounting advice, tax advice, with the label of a CPA, they say, no, you are unfit. Even though I've seen several videos of uh, Jermaine D. Morrison, Jay Morrison, giving extremely bad uh, business advice and tax advice, you guys can check out the other videos that I've done in the past where I've reacted to his bad uh, accounting and tax advice. He can't do it under the banner of a CPA because his actions have consequences. Now, let me go, let me show you guys this. Here we go. Let's talk about this fella. Now, this fella openly admitted that he was a drug dealer for several years and that he also committed credit card fraud. Well, just like Jermaine Morrison, and just like Brother Polite, his actions have consequences. There are certain things he cannot do because of his past. The CFP board states that a man with his criminal past should not have 
the privilege of giving financial advice to manage the money or the investments of other people under the banner of being a CFP, a certified financial planner. Why? Because the crimes that he did in the past, if given the privilege of giving advice or managing the money under the banner of a certified financial planner, it could put him in a position where he'll fall back on his bad habits. He may commit financial fraud again because he did it in the past. Don't, you should not tempt a person with this type of past. So you try to protect the greater public by saying your actions have consequences. You can no longer do this. Okay. So actions have consequences, but we still, as a greater society, as a community, for some reason, we try not to hold people accountable for these things. Listen, I'm all for giving someone a second chance in life, but I'm not going to give you a second chance to scam me. I'm not going to give you a second chance to defraud me. Because just, I just want you to remember the video that I played before. In that video, DJ Envy said people warned him to not do business with Caesar because of his past. People warned him to not associate himself with Caesar because of his scammer past, because of his drug dealing past. Do not tie yourself with a man like this in this particular way or you can end up in trouble. Well, here we are, 2023. And it looks like DJ Envy is in some trouble because he gave a man with a very bad financial past a second chance. Dozens of tri-state area investors say they were victims of a Ponzi scheme, losing six figures each in what they thought was a legitimate real estate deal. News 12 senior investigative reporter Walt Kane has this Kane in your corner investigation. I was happy to be a part of something, especially something this big. Stanley Acosta thought it was his chance to give his family a better life. He invested $150,000 in cash in a real estate development deal. The money was supposed to be used to flip this property in Patterson. But Stanley says almost as soon as he signed the deal, something felt wrong. One of the biggest flags for me was he didn't count the cash. Um, I'm giving you $150,000 in cash. You're going to want to make sure that every dollar is there. The developer was Cesar Pena, a social media influencer who advertises real estate seminars. Stanley's contract promised in return for his $150,000 investment, he'd get $45,000 in interest, a 30% return in just five months. But nearly a year later, he hasn't seen any money and says Pena has stopped returning messages. From a financial standpoint, it's killed me completely. Um, I've had to take out loans to pay off credit card debts. And Stanley isn't alone. Kane in Your Corner has uncovered over a dozen lawsuits filed by people who say they invested with Pena and never got the money they were promised. I was texting him like almost every other day, like, hey, what's up with the money, Caesar? Like, I need that money, bro. Like, constantly texting him, texting him, texting him. He keeps delaying, delaying. Our investigation finds in some cases, Pena sold investments in properties real estate records show he never owned or sold years earlier. The lawsuits already total close to $10 million, with more being filed every week. For the last year and a half or more, it's just been taking money in from people and, and there's been no, no likelihood of people getting their money back. Some of the lawsuits also mention Rashawn Casey. He's a radio personality who goes by the name DJ Envy. Casey often appeared with Pena at real estate seminars, but his attorney insists he's a victim too. And DJ Envy also um, gave $500,000 as an investment, uh, which he has not uh, received back yet. Pena's attorney declined to be interviewed, but in a letter to the court, he complains about the tactics he says some investors are using. He writes, my clients need time to first protect their family from threats of death, rape, and physical harm. After that, he writes, they need to make serious and complex decisions as to how to move forward 
and what attorney or attorneys to move forward with. As for Stanley Acosta, he just hopes he and his family get some of their money back. If I had an opportunity to say something to Caesar and his family, it would be to just uh, do right by the victims. The SEC says before you invest money in any business deal, have an attorney review the contract and beware of anyone who guarantees high profits, especially if they also say there's little to no risk involved. In your corner, I'm Walt Kane, News 12. All right, listen, I have Tony the Closer here. I'm about to bring him up. But before I bring Tony up, I just want to show you guys a clip that's a little confusing to me because earlier you saw that DJ Envy, through his attorney, he's claiming that he's a victim of Caesar. But not too long ago, when Tony was talking to him, it was a different story. Check this out. Some of the lawsuits also mention Rashawn Casey. He's a radio personality who goes by the name DJ Envy. Casey often appeared with Pena at real estate seminars, but his attorney insists he's a victim too. And DJ Envy also um, gave $500,000 as an investment, uh, which he has not uh, received back yet. <laughs> I, you know, I like keeping it real, right? So how, how, have you, how has your business dealings been with Caesar? Does he owe you money? We have an investment together that we're going to sell. He does not owe me money. We partnered up on a property. We partnered up on a property. Does he owe half. It's owe you money, DJ Henry? He does not owe me money. He does not owe me money. Yeah, uh, from, from the uh, outset, this has been uh, DJ Envy playing the game of distance himself once the news broke of um the millions of dollars that was was owed so essentially what happened is uh one one of dj envy's partners the credit dude he came on to one of my ig lives and he just he flat out said it he was like hey if you think that you've been covering a big scam covering big business wait till you catch on to the scam that's happening uh in new jersey so he breaks you know he we have a call he tells me that he was scammed out of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars uh, I begin to ask and cover that situation. Another guy comes and says he was scammed out of a million bucks. And within like three to four days, it was like over $7 million in people that were in my DM claiming to be victims of C uh, Caesar. Uh, and then I got on the call with Envy. He, uh, he told me, you know, that this was a bad situation, that there were a lot of lawsuits, that this was going to be something that was going to get major litigation, that there were uh, authorities investigating, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then he does an IG live with me and he basically lies and denies everything that he said with me on, um, on the phone. And for the last now four or five months has been, you know, a, a scene out of a movie. Um, we went from everything from, uh, me having guys come to the lobby of, of, of my residence to, um, having people uh attack you know personally my my girlfriend and my family safety um this has been a real situation and when you got i think a lot of people just look at this stuff for entertainment but typically what, what's going on is that you're interrupting people you know taking millions of dollars from people and they want to be able to continue to have their lifestyle so they're willing to go pretty far uh to you know try to keep their their lifestyles the way that they have been so um, right now, what you're seeing with Caesar is, you know, the market set, re, you know, reset itself. We're, we're headed into a recession and we're in a recession. Uh, and those investors, just like in many Ponzi, start wanting their money all at once. And when all those people, just like what we saw Bernie Madoff, uh, when all the people and investors started, you know, hearing the news and wanting their money and demanding money at once, he's unable to pay. Uh, we've now seen that there's well over 40 plus lawsuits um, that that uh, Caesar's involved in, Envy's involved in, I think, 11 to 12 of those lawsuits. Um, there's millions of dollars. There's people that have lost their lives. There's people that have attempted to, to you know, delete themselves. I mean, this has been one of the craziest situations I've ever been involved in. And to think that this was coming from a place of using, you know, the breakfast club and um, them talking about empowering the community and using this as a way to get real estate, you know, to the masses. You're literally looking at millions of dollars that were, were uh, completely just stolen from people. I'm talking about uh, complete fraud. 
This isn't just, oh, this is an investment that has gone bad. This is people who put money in real estate deals that either they had multiple people. So for example, you had, uh, you had like eight to nine people that had gave millions of dollars on the property, um, that, that they did business with Caesar on. So just very, um, fraudulent deals all the way around. Uh, I, I've been told at this point is well over $44 million in, in, uh, in claims and this thing can continue to grow. Um, this is one of the most, uh, disgusting things I've ever seen in the financial literacy space. I think when you see the amount of people who try to, uh, you know, cape and cover for people who have done this to innocent people, this stuff is exhausting. Um, and I, I noticed that people always say, Hey, Tony's in the middle of these things. And, um, unfortunately we need to have more people in the middle of these things to, to make our community a safer place to invest in, to be able to really truly build generational wealth. Um, I've now seen the importance of having platforms like myself, yourself, Eli, uh, Spencer, and, and the other platforms that cover these type of financial crimes because there's millions of, uh, of dollars, well, hundreds of millions of dollars being being stolen on a, on a daily basis. If there's no attention brought to it, it would be that many more millions of dollars stolen from innocent people that will be uh, unknowing of what's happening right now. The crazy story, there was a guy who uh, invested $835,000 less than two weeks before the news broke um, that that I had found out that they were running a Ponzi scheme. And it was so crazy that the guy came into my comment section and told me, he said, you're, you're, you're committing slander and defamation. Caesar's a good guy. Well, well, a couple months later, he's now one of the lawsuits that you see uh, on on the uh the actual website so people that that you know that would have never been able, that could have been saved potentially if they had heard news soon or if other people had came out and let people know what was going on now this man is out of eight hundred and thirty five thousand um there's so many people that are loot that have lost money that i i don't believe that they'll be able to see it back unless there's some way of getting it back from like maybe iheart radio or something or dj envy but um this is a a terrible, terrible uh, financial tragedy. There's a lot of people that's impacted that I just think people just completely overlook. And the most disgusting piece about it is how predatory it was to our own community. The same people that said that they were tired of seeing people take advantage of our community are the same ones that continue to pray and then try to make threats and bully people that bring this thing to the light. So um, I think we need to get to a position in place where we really start talking about uh, what do we want of our, out of our culture and where we really truly want to go? Because it sounds good to say that we want generational wealth. It sounds good to be able to say that we want to, uh, you know, get together and, 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 you know, combine our finances and all these cool things that you've heard all these people say. But the reality is, if there aren't any checks and balances, if there aren't people that are willing to speak up and talk about the things that are wrong, uh, many people are so more concerned about the uh, benefit of being, being in alignment of some of these people that they'll sacrifice their integrity and know that wrong things are taking place and not say anything. We need to get to a place where you can have safe places to do business, man. Shout out to everyone who's, you know, uh, covering this story because the victims appreciate it. There's a lot of people that are stressing and they never had a platform and never had the opportunity. They've been blocked uh, and silenced and, um, they want, they want justice. So, uh, Salute to UJT for covering this, man. Shout out to Spencer. He did a phenomenal job on the video today. Uh, Eli, man, my guy, man, we, we, we take on a lot of heat. Uh, our families get put at risk. And once again, I think a lot of people just consume this as content. And the unfortunate piece is like when you when you cover a lot of this stuff, people will see you as, as an instigator, agitator, or someone who's always problematic in, in, in situations where – you're truly trying to give light to people that want to be able to, you know, hear, you know, get justice to these, you know, things that are taking place, man. Yeah, man. Th listen, got to give a big shout out to the work, man. I want to give people an opportunity to call in because now that the story is really got more legs to it, more information has come out really thanks to you and the work that you're doing, really working with a lot of these alleged victims to get them, 
uh, their story out to try to get some kind of justice for the victims. I want to give people an opportunity uh, to call in, give their, uh, you know, their opinion on the story and maybe even ask you questions. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. So we got a couple of people. We got Michael here in the back. So I'm going to bring up Michael first and uh, we'll go over it together. So listen, people, when you hit that link, the link to join the show is in the chat. All you got to do is hit the link. Don't worry about coming up because no one's going to see you. It's audio only. You hit that link that's pinned to the top of the chat and I will bring you up. So let me bring up Michael, Michael, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Hello. Yes, sir. You live on the air. I have a question. Um, obviously, but um, do you think that uh, um, from the get go they was trying to screw uh screw people over, or do you think they 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 were trying to uh they were trying to they had good intentions. They 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 were trying to, they were doing stuff. Certain things went sideways. They bit too much that they chose that. A bit too much than they could chew, chew, and you know, it ended up being a Ponzi scheme. What is your, uh, what is your uh, opinion on, on that? Okay, so from my experience, and I've been <laughs> dealing with this for a long time because I've been in the finance space for a long time. Most Ponzi schemes do start off innocent enough, right? Most Ponzi schemes do. There are some Ponzi schemes that the person they knew from jump that. It was going to be a Ponzi scheme. But for the most part, from my personal experience, most Ponzi schemes start off with a person who initially they are trying to create some kind of return for people's investment. Here's where it all goes downhill. Instead of admitting that, you know what, I don't have the juice, <laughs> whatever it is, instead of just simply admitting, hey, you know, I, I cannot give you the return that I said I could give you. Uh, you know, I believe they were claiming a 30% return or something like that. Instead of just saying, I can't. And then there's also the element of some of this money that they're supposed to be investing, they live off the money because they have to maintain a lifestyle or try to build this bigger than life uh, lifestyle for more potential investors. So they're living off half the money, thinking that they can also get the return. Sooner or later, they realize they don't have the juice. They cannot get that type of return. That's when the Ponzi comes into play because they're thinking, oh, sooner or later, I can get a deal that's going to make everybody hold. But at the same time, you're still living some kind of lavish lifestyle and you're lying consistently lying time and time again to the other investors claiming oh everything's going good the deal's closing or oh i just need a little bit more time but honestly they're just waiting for a new investor to come in to then take their money so yeah i, I think it might have started out innocent but honestly it probably just turned uh ugly what, what do you think tony I think this thing started out exactly what it is. I think it was a money laundering operation that uh, that was a Ponzi from the beginning. I think that uh, Envy and uh, Caesar both came into business with with uh, with a way to that they were going to distribute money and and it wasn't for for uh, real estate purposes. This was all about doing. Um, a, a a drug operation. I 100% believe drugs are involved in this uh this deal here. When you look at the amount of properties that have been involved that have literally not been touched at all, you're not talking about somebody that was working on deals and COVID slowed it down or something of that nature. You're looking at properties that four, five, six, seven, eight people funded plus banks funded that never ever were touched. That's very clear to understand like that money that these people were bringing in never was used for real estate. The millions of dollars that people were bringing in when that money came in, it wasn't used to do anything with real estate at all. It was it was used for something else. That money was never, ever spent on the assets and the things that people have put their money to. When you go and you look at a property that they tell you, hey, we, we've been working on it for the past four or five months and it's going to be due next month. And people were literally driving to the property and that property was untouched. 
They weren't using that money for real estate. And you're talking about millions of dollars. When people bring you 500,000, 700,000, 250,000 at a piece in cash, he, he, they were instructing people to bring them money in cash. They were instructing people and guaranteeing and writing personal guarantees, using these real estate pieces as collateral, all using operating agreements. I'm telling you right now, this thing was a Ponzi from the fucking beginning. They knew their intent was to money launder drugs. There's nothing else that would make sense. There's nothing else like from when you have somebody coming to my house and and, and uh and trying to and silence me and, and, and all the threats. It, the, the only reason that you're doing that is because you're running drugs. No mm. other reason. To to be to have to have people talking about they they're gonna do this or do that. They're only trying to cover one one thing. So. You know, I know a lot of people want to think, well, man, man, there's no way that Envy would get involved in this. Man, he brought a drug dealing scammer on, on a breakfast club and they continue to do what they were already doing. They scammed and did more drugs, like flat out. What did Caesar get arrested for? He said it on there. They, they probably said it. His brother has multiple videos where he said, I still want to scam and do more drugs. That's what he said. So, so they've come out and they like they've given you a clear indicator of all the things that you know um would, would be a, a drug operation and, and you know i'm gonna save some of the things that i do know and i'm aware of but there's a lot of ties to major drug uh, uh operations so this is you know once again as people will see once you know a lot of people see me and they say hey tony's always involved in these different situations i was not trying to snoop in this situation i was actually minding my business the credit dude threw me in the middle of this shit. i wish i never heard about it <laughs> honestly what is done what is done to you know the the inside of my family and the impact that it has not been worth it at all um but the reality is that i think for the people that's been impacted as victims i'm gonna give you a voice uh you have my platform i've given you guys and dedicated my platform to you I think once you see and once more of these things come to the light, people will have a better respect for what has taken place and what I've been able to do as far as giving victims a platform because these guys are absolutely disgusting. They've uh, they've stolen from the very people that trusted and loved in these people and believed in them. And uh, most of these people will probably never be able to recover. So I'm glad that uh, once again, you guys are, are covering it here, uh, pocket watching. JT uh, and, and uh, Spencer and Eli, shout out to everybody that's talking about this thing because it needs to be covered. Shout out to Joe Budden, shout out to Funk Flex, Rick Ross, um, all the people that have highlighted this uh, this story is necessary. I know a lot of people take this stuff as a joke, but man, this has uh, really impacted a lot of people very bad. Um, and I just want to help people that, that have gone through what I've went through. When Jay stole from me, man, I know the feeling, uh, the pain, the the uh the thoughts that go through your mind that will put you in a situation that you don't need to be in based on somebody you know stealing your money so i just wanted to be able to give the victims an opportunity to have a platform to be able to share what was going on uh hopefully the uh, authorities get involved um i'm hopeful that the authorities do uh you know make arrest because this is you know from what i've looked at clear fraud uh mm -hmm. you're looking at you know none of this like none of this even makes sense man you have people that if they use the money properly and did what they say they were going to do they could be heroes but inside instead they wanted to be thieves and lavish so they're no different than big business big uh caesar and envy are are a scaled version of big business the same exact you know selling bullshit properties um lying to people you know not delivering um and then and then a whole bunch of excuses after the fact Many people trusted in these guys because they were on major platforms. They were co-signed by some of the biggest rappers and entertainers in the industries. And um, I just want people to understand that right now, you know, there's a lot of people that just accept money and they'll let you uh, get scammed and don't give a shit about it. So um, no refunds, no peace. I have I have been on this for uh, uh, three years now since the Jay Morrison situation. It's still no refunds, no peace. It's about consistency. It's about being loud. It's about disrupting. The same place that they want to prey on people is the same place that you go raise hell. And I know a lot of people may not understand my delivery, but I know that's the only way that they're going to pay attention. So um, 
when I try to do it the quiet way and be polite, nobody wanted to listen. But when I raised all this hell and I started calling people out their name, that's when I got everybody's attention. So, hey, guess what? Now you guys are paying attention and you can watch JT and Spencer and everybody articulated in a way that might be a little bit more comfortable to your taste. But uh, I had to go in the mud to get dirty with the guys that was doing all the dirt. So um, I hope you guys understand that, once again, this is only to help people that have been victimized. Uh, I get no financial gain whatsoever from this stuff, uh, as long as, as long as it costs me headache and more money, uh, and, and plenty of relationships. So, um, once again, man, shout out to JT for uh, giving me a platform and letting me share and 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 on this this topic, man. Absolutely, bro. Thank you. There's a couple of more callers. I want to get these callers on. So, I got Dennis. I got Jane. Gerald. Eric and I got before the billions in the building. So let me bring up uh Dennis real quick. Dennis, you are live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Not much, not much, man. Thank you for having me. Uh I guess one of the things that I just thought about, uh why are so why are some people so lazy that they would give their money to these individuals instead of researching and uh understanding because they're not just giving little money. I think off of Spencer's channel, one lady uh, gave like $250,000 from a right. settlement that she had uh, got. And I'm yeah, thinking, I'm and they're promising, like, what, was he, what did he promise? Like 30% returns? Like, he promised it, like, right. as a guarantee. And one of the things I thought about, I'm like, that's a lot of money to give any individual that specifically you do not know. But also within real estate, I think there's, there should be a certain level of understanding, not necessarily you have to be an expert. But you should understand where your money's going. You should be able to look at the numbers and see if they make sense. But it just seems like they're just giving their money away to people that they think know what they're doing and then just crying wolf when they didn't do any research themselves on how these people invest. Uh, I would say reviews on their investments. You get what I'm saying? Like it, no, yeah. it seems like there was actual no actual thought as opposed to are they going to be strategic with their investment? Uh, mm -hmm. What have they done with people before? It just seems like people rather just give their money as opposed to just actually studying how to invest or going to a financial planner and just learning to do it the correct way so that they wouldn't lose their money. In my opinion, I'd rather take two to three years and actually learn how to invest as opposed to losing <laughs> a whole $250,000. Yeah. That's just me. Maybe that's just me. No, no, no. I, I, I get your point. I 100% get your point. Is just that I've been doing this so long, I understand the mindset of a person who finds himself in this situation. The issue comes down to you can never underestimate the power of influence, right? They're called influencers for a reason. When you have a person like DJ Envy and their, uh, their stature in the community, like uh, he's a DJ. Right. Like to, to me, he's a DJ. If I have or I need a recommendation on a song to play at a party, I'm, I'm, I'm going to holler at DJ Envy. Right. Absolutely. But the average person, if you see them on TV, if you see them on a huge platform or you listen to them on the radio, if they are palling around with celebrities, the average person is going to assume that they are legit. So when you have DJ Envy standing next to a Caesar opinion and, and DJ Envy is basically, you know, certifying that this is a good guy and he knows what he's doing. And he's on a huge platform like iHeartRadio and all the other yeah. platforms that he found himself on. And they are championing him. They are also saying, this is a good guy. Wow, he has an amazing story, right? Buy his book, do all these things. The average person is assuming that they did their due diligence, especially like if you go to his website, you see all these other celebrities that he quote unquote did deals with, are partnered with, are made money with all of these other celebrities. So you assume when you're a person with limited resources, you're making the assumption that this very famous person who did business with this guy, they have the resources to look into his background. They have the resources to research what his abilities are and skill level are. They have the resources to do that. 
So when you're an average person, you just say, oh, well, if they say he's good, then he must be good and he's okay. But you see in reality, when sugar turns to crack, now yeah. all of a sudden it's, oh, I got scammed too. And, oh, you know, all that. They'll say that when everything goes bad. Absolutely. But it's trust me, hey, I'm giving them the the, the green light when everything is in the beginning stages so that that's the issue it's not that they're dumb it's not that people don't you know are, are, are you know they're being super naive it's the fact that they they you know so succumb to the fact that influence is a hell of a drug people are going people are going to listen to people that they look up to for whatever reason that they look up to them all right listen we're going to take a few more calls i don't want to hold tony up too long so we got uh before the billions we got uh, Jane Doe, Gerald, and Eric. So let me bring up uh, a friend of the show, longtime friend of the show. We got before the billions in the building. What's going on, man? Hey, JT, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. What What do you think about this topic? Yeah, so overall on this topic, you know, I used to watch The Breakfast Club, and I'm pretty sure that on the suggested videos on even this video, you're going to see a Breakfast Club. It just how it is for you know black youtube yep. but when i first heard this story i was thinking man it really changed the light especially your video the light that i saw dj envy in like at first it was like okay he's just you know like the kind of like the sidekick compared to like charlamagne the god you know what i mean mm -hmm. but then it turned into okay like now he's on the same level of a jay morrison where <laughs> Where it's like, okay, yeah, you just really are just scamming. And then especially when I watched Tony's live stream, uh, and he got up there, and he was just gaslighting. It just absolutely didn't make any sense. Uh, but you make a lot of great points, JT, when you say that for our community, we really highlight uh, people who have these, these paths where, you know, they may have stole money from people. You came up with a video uh, talking about uh, G Herbo. Yeah, and, and um, and how he was scamming, and even so, tomorrow they have um Revolt World in Atlanta, and he's going to be speaking about mental health in hip hop, even after you know all these charges came up. So, it re like I think I feel like we're amplifying the bad things within our community, and I, I, I just like how the last caller said, I really don't understand why people will give your money to somebody who you know is poison in the community or no is stealing from people or will tell you that they did it in the past and they are just going to get the money and do it again yeah yeah i mean it's just once again i said earlier in the show i am a believer in second chances i am a believer in having the ability to reinvent yourself you should not be tied to your past mistakes in a way where you can never move forward, where you can never live down your mistakes of the past. I do not want to live in a world where you cannot move forward, but within reason, right? It's within reason. I, I'm not the person who's going to say, oh, well, you know, it, everything's fine. Uh, uh, like with Brother Polite, you know, no one is going to have Brother Polite as their babysitter, right? One, legally, you can't do it. He, he, he cannot be alone with children unsupervised, but there's someone out there who's crazy enough to say, well, he did his time, let's move on. No, he can move on in all of the areas where the court says he can move on, but he can't move on in these other areas that may trigger what got him in prison in the first place. Same thing with people who do financial crimes, scams, whatever it is. Hey, listen, I, I support you in trying to change your life. But if you did a financial crime, whatever it was, you will not be uh, rewarded with a second chance to manage my money. I'm not going to do any financial deals with you whatsoever. And that is not profiling that is not holding someone to their past. It's recognizing reality and not being in a situation where you will get got. That's what it is. But before the billions, yeah, go hey, check JT, out. Hey, JT, I want to. Um... Yeah, go go ahead. I, I, whoa, whoa, let me bring you up. Hold on. There you go. 
I think a, a key piece to this, I keep hearing people ask that question, like why do people like feel like they they should do business with Envy uh, and, and Caesar? Couple couple key pieces. Um, there were personal guarantees that were involved in these deals. There were attorneys and contracts that were used. Uh, a lot of these people were aggressively, you know, sold on the idea of the celebrity likeness, whether it had been 50 Cent or Snoop Dogg or Envy, the TV shows that they had coming up. Um, it was a full presentation to get people there. Like, for example, Amy Flip, she came on my live. She made it perfectly clear. She was like not interested in investing. And they pitched her extremely hard and sent, you know, multiple pictures and, and things to try to convince her that this was a good deal. She went and got attorneys involved. She had them get personal guarantees on her contract. Uh, so this wasn't just people blindly, dumbly investing. They were getting shown properties. They were getting uh, everything that you would potentially see that would make you say, OK, this would be a safe investment before they were actually scammed. So I know many people just think, oh, well, why did you just give it to them? Well, people went and did due diligence. They looked up the properties. They looked up the uh you know what they could see as far as Caesar and his background at the time, nobody had come out and said anything negative. You got to think about it. Even to this day, there, there's hundreds of people that have been done a foul, but they just haven't spoken up about it. So if nobody's coming out because we live in this world where nobody wants to look like they got taken advantage of or got scammed. So they all keep it to themselves. Uh, everybody, you know, has this code of, of, of oh, I'm just going, you know, I'm going to handle it offline or I'm going to do it my own way. So these things don't come to the light. And if you don't have platforms like my own that, you know, people came up and spoke up, you never know that this stuff is happening. So you're going to get more and more victims because for whatever reason, we take this mentality of just keeping it to our chin and, and letting people continue to victimize other people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a great point. It's sad, but this is a great point. This is needed. Let's get through these calls. We got, uh, Jane Doe. Jane Doe, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. Hi, Mr. Pocket Watcher. Uh, mm. The previous caller, Dennis, he kind of asked my question, but I want to mm. just kind of still ask you anyway. I really, uh, for years, I have watched American Greed. That's one of my favorite shows. Me and, too. Uh, now it's your show. And uh, I kind of want to touch upon what Dennis uh, asked you. Uh, I'm a person who's worked in the media for about about 20 years. I have a radio talk show, and I specialize in entertainment journalism. I'm interviewing lots and lots of personalities. In fact, I've even interviewed the host of American Greed, Stacey Keach. <laughs> this is what I want. I just, really, you would be surprised some of the people I've interviewed. But anyway, it's not about what I do. It's what you guys are doing a wonderful job. But what, this Thank is you. what gets me is, this is, you know, this is just, me whenever a celebrity endorses anything i usually go the look the other way and the reason this is my opinion is because in most cases that celebrity is a what paid endorser right and that doesn't mean that the, the product is bad or maybe the product is a, a fake or anything but the fact that they are a paid endorser person does not encourage me to want to go buy it at all and and what you had mentioned a minute ago about people getting second chances yeah you can have a second chance with me but just not with my money i don't yes. mind donating to whatever you're doing i don't mind doing to that but this is my question then i'll hang up mm -hmm. jt i don't understand when i watch american greed when i listen to your show i just don't understand if you have a person you have 40,000, 850,000, whatever it is, mm. what's wrong with going to Smith Barney, Payne Weber, or some of those types of brokerage firms to invest? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? And then I'll just shut up and continue to listen. So, and again, thank you for what you're doing for the community and really for everybody. Th thank you, sister. I appreciate you and the work that, that you do. You know, you're, you're a real journalist. I'm just a financial advisor talking my ish on YouTube. You're a real journalist and, and, and I appreciate and I respect that. To answer your question, the reason why people are not running to traditional uh, investment managers, money managers, is because it's not sexy. It's not sexy. See, if you, if they would have came to me 
I probably would have gave them advice that would have been more like, hey, listen, we want to invest for the long term, uh, probably get you into some kind of index funds where you're going to get probably between 8 and 12% over the long term. No one wants to hear about 8 and 12% in a year, even though that's most likely a legit investment. That's really a good investment to get 10% a year on your money. That's actually really good. No one wants to hear that. See, that's becoming wealthy in the long term. People want to get rich now. You tell a person, listen, forget that. I'm going to give you 30% in six months. When you hear that, it turns some click in your brain that says, you know what? I want it. Even though it doesn't sound super credible, it's so tempting. I want to do it. It's like the fitness world. If you go to a fitness trainer who tells you, listen, if you want a summer body, you probably need to start right now. It's the fall now. You need to start working on your summer body now. What you need to do, you need to work on your diet. You need to make sure that you're working out three times a week, about three times a week. If you do that between now and next summer, you'll have a summer body. Most people don't want to work that hard. They don't want to you know, have to wait that long. They'll rather wait to about a month out before the summer and somebody's going to tell them if they take this pill and they buy this machine or they get this surgery, they'll have the perfect summer body that they want. It's human nature. Human nature is the issue here. If there's an available option that is easier and quicker, we take it. The problem is, most likely it's a scam <laughs> because if it was real, everyone would do it. If these type of investments were legitimate, you have to ask yourself this question. Why are they coming to you? If they're going to give you 30% return on your money in the matter of months, why do they need Joe Smo? Like, I know everyone is special. I get it. My mother tells me I'm super special. Every time I talk to her, she tells me I'm super special. But I know reality, right? I'm special to her, right? But I'm just a, a regular person. Why would they come to me with a deal where they're going to flip my money? Are they going to give me a 30% return in a few months when they could go to a multimillionaire or a billionaire who will give me multiples of millions of dollars and they won't ask for their money back for years. No one ever asked that themselves that question. Why me? Why are you giving me such a great deal when it makes more sense to go to people who have deeper pockets, who are not going to be calling you up every month asking, where's my money? That's the problem. It's human nature. It's what I refer to as the original sin of personal finance. People are fundamentally lazy when it comes to finance. If they can get it fast and easy, they will always take that option. And that blinds them to the reality that they're most likely getting into a scam. All right. Got a couple more callers. Then we're going to wrap this thing up. We got Gerald. Gerald, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Hey, JT, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for calling. You know, <laughs> this is has amazed me. I've, you know, listened to you for a while. You know, I'm from the Midwest, too, Chicago. Shut and up. I got I got family in St. Louis, and mm -hmm. I live in South Florida now. Mm -hmm. And it just amazes me, right? I'm a little bit older than you guys, right? Mm -hmm. And so I've been down here in South Florida for about almost 25 years. I made my first million when I was 27 mm -hmm. and I look and I see these guys actually getting away with this. Right. <laughs> I mean, taking money. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and just keep doing it over and over and over. And then you even got celebrities like DJ Envy will come on the air. I mean, nobody is harassing like his workplace. Like, you know, uh, I mean, the corporate, uh, right. I heart radio. company, right? Yeah. No, nobody is. Is I, I'm. I'm like, what is going on with everybody? I mean, 
I mean, it, back in my day, you think you could take 250000 Man, stop it now. Just cut it out. You think in St. Louis you can get away with that? No, not one day, not one second. It will not happen. No, 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 no. It will never happen. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, it's like everybody's just giving it away. I mean, what is going on, man? Listen, I mean, what you doing, right? And, mm -hmm. I, <laughs> and I know... It comes from your heart because you are from the Midwest. And I know that. And a lot, a lot of people, if you know a person from the Midwest, they're going to tell you just like it is. And not just well, that's what you say. You you just telling people just like it is. Listen, that ain't going to work, period. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I mean, it is sad because, you know, like Tony said, a lot of times people can't recover. I mean, mm -hmm. I get it, man. I, I mean, I understand. I had a lady one time at a uh, a title company, right? And mm -hmm. she, I was loaning money on mortgages, and she would not record the mortgage, right? She mm -hmm. would take the money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people can come up with some elaborate scams and stuff like that. I mean, but what you're doing and what you guys are doing, I mean, and you're doing it the correct way. I mean, you actually trying to get the authorities involved. Actually, mm -hmm. I mean, you. <laughs> You, you're too good. That's what I, I mean. It, it's it's a man. I'm like, man, this they are too good. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. But I mean, you know, I just want to say that to you. I mean, keep uh, putting up the good fight and everything like that, man. But, you know, don't let nobody get you down. You my boy from the Midwest. So, you know, I got to ride out with you, though, for real. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Gerald, thank you, bro. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for calling in. All right, we got a couple more calls and we're going to wrap this thing up. We got Eric, we got Lemon, we got Chestnut Checkers, and then we got Jane, Jane L. All right, so let me get let me get Eric in the building. Eric, what's going on? How you doing, man? How you doing, JT? Uh, first of all, man, I want to say thank you. Um, I started watching your videos back when you talked about Forex, and that was <laughs> around the time that I was actually looking to get into it as a young guy, so... You kind of uh, helped me dodge a bullet right there, you know, and uh, You're I welcome. started working in tech. So I want to really thank you for that. And, you know, it's an honor to be here talking to you right now. Um, my question about this whole situation is mm. um, I just watched Spencer's video not too long ago before joining your live. Mm -hmm. And he had talked about how Caesar was taking money from a bunch of other people. And he was like saying that they were all going to have access to the same properties, you know, so. My question is, at what point do you think he decided, OK, you know what, I'm just going to just let this thing boil over and, you know, sign three, four five people to the same property, quote unquote. Right. Mm -hmm. But they're paying him all of this money and saying, oh, they're going to get X amount percent, X amount of time. So at what point do you think like he decided, you know, OK, this is this is what I'm going to do. I'm sticking with it. And, you know, screw uh, DJ Envy, because really it's kind of playing off on him, too. Right. Mm. Well, so, I mean, I want to hear I want to hear Tony's opinion on this, but I, I yeah. I'll I'll say mine first. Okay. So, based on my understanding, mm. the victims, right, the alleged victims, they were unaware that many of them were tied oh. to the same property. It's not as if like they knew. Oh, we've got like five people who were supposed to be investing in the same property. From my understanding, from my understanding, it was. Each one of them believed that they were the main investor of this one particular property. But, you know, based on limited resources, based on the fact that real real estate deals weren't going on, based on what I'm hearing, he only had access to a certain amount of properties. Right. If a person right. was really going to look into the situation, they would see that he didn't have access to certain properties, even though the report said that he did get investors to yeah. believe that they were investing in properties that he wasn't even associated with, mm -hmm. or he was associated with those properties in the past, but not during the yeah. time when he was actively trying to get investors. I mean, it's just it's just how Ponzi schemes work. You're selling the same dream to a bunch of people who don't know each other or they're unaware that they're investing in the same limited resource that in no way could return the money to all of them. Right. Yeah. So that, that's what I see. But I, I okay. want to hear from Tony and what, what he thinks. Well, <clears throat> I, I think the main thing is, like you said, I, well, it, two things. First and foremost, you got many people not understanding that they were just being flat out lied to. That's the first 
first and foremost. So they weren't going through typical real estate deals where they were going to a title company. They were told that they were doing uh, investments into these properties, which they were getting operating agreements. So uh, there was no way to basically reference or check uh, if there were other people as associated to the actual deals that they were signing. So Caesar had people, if, let's use 123 Manchester Street for an example. He had 123 Manchester Street as an operating agreement and he would sign that operating agreement to five or six other people. None of those people, that's not being filed at the register of deeds or, or, or anything like that. So you're not, there's no way to research that actual operating agreement. So people were getting contracts and personal guarantees and it was on the same property addresses. So it lets you know that it was clearly set to be a Ponzi first and foremost, because there's no way in the heck that you could have clear, clear and good intention if you're doing that with multiple people on the same addresses, like just there's no way that you can make that money nor promise those type of return. Like none of it adds up. And that's why I tell people, I said, this has been, you know, from the beginning, a very clear Ponzi. Um, and, you know, from a very important thing that came, the, the source that was, you know, essentially the whistleblower who was the credit dude, he told us that, uh, he made envy aware of his situation where he was scammed august of last year so august of 2022 the credit dude told envy hey i just got scammed out of 150k by caesar and envy continued to promote uh, uh caesar even after that and there were other people who also had brought brought it to his attention so i i, knew, I think they knew that it was a ponzi I, it's clear that they, they didn't have a good intention on doing great business by anybody. If you got that many uh, people investing into the same property, there's no way that you can make that money nor guarantee those uh, returns that they were guaranteeing unless they were doing something illegal. So that's my <laughs> now, now that's, that's a great point. Cause just, just think about this for a second, Tony, just think about this. If I'm giving you 30%, how much am I making? Right, just just think if if I'm gonna give an investor thirty percent, what what am I making? Five percent? Like it it doesn't it, like like is the total investment gonna be thirty five percent, and I'm gonna give you thirty when I'm doing all the work and you're just the money? Like usually, like let's say it's a fifty fifty deal. Well, if it's a fifty fifty deal and I'm giving you thirty percent, that means this is a sixty percent return on overall investment. Like if you gotta I, think about having five people on that deal yeah it's like yeah, yeah it's five, five people who are unaware that they're all on the same deal five five, five people by 30 percent right. <laughs> like, it ain't it ain't happening man. It's just... nine people by 30 percent i mean you're talking about i don't know how you could even come up with these numbers unless you were given you were getting free property like there's no way that you would ever be able to you know give out those type of returns unless you're giving out free property or flipping keys they well, say he's flipping that, NJ, he was flipping them keys that 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 was the title of his of his book right flipping keys or something like that when, whenever i hear too much drug talk in the business talk mixed together red flag all right we got like four more callers that's it no new callers because i don't want to hold tony up too much longer we got lemon coming in lemon you're live on the air with pocket watching with JT. What's going on? Hey, JT, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. What's going on? Oh, phenomenal. Guess what? I love your fucking show. Oh, oh my God. Can I use profanity? Not, not a whole lot, but that, that'll do. I'll take that. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. I will refrain from using profanity with my air quotes, <laughs> my fingers. Okay, love Tony Closer. Thank you so much, Tony, for your insight and your love. And your persistence into, you know, like stepping on these MFers necks. Okay, love your show, JT. I just got to get that out. Thank you so much. I appreciate you calling in. We're going to wrap this thing up. We got three more callers. We got Chess, not Checkers. You're live on the air. What's going on? What's popping, JT? First yes, time man. caller, long time watcher. What's that? Thank it. you and Tony for what y'all been doing. Um, I do got a question though. Uh huh. Uh, now, with all of the money and the funds that they've gotten, uh, mm -hmm. even though it was cash, right? 
how are people able to go by and show like the money that they've funded to them? And my second question is by looking at the funds, I definitely can allegedly think that they're doing uh, what they call laundering money, possibly. I mean, that, because of the larger amounts that they're doing, yeah. they're doing little, like laundering money, and it's possible they're laundering money for drugs. Yeah. I ain't going to say cartels, that, I mean, that, that say Word on the street, that's what they're saying. Uh, I, I want to let Tony speak on this because he's got more knowledge of this. But from what I'm aware of, yes. They were taking investments in cash, and cash is an extremely hard thing to track. I would never advise anyone to uh, make an investment in cash. I'd wire the money to them, cash it. Whatever you have to do, you do it in a way where you can track it. Cash is hard to track, but because they had signed contracts, right? Oh. They had signed contracts, even though if you make a transaction in cash, a person signed a piece of paper acknowledging that you gave them that sum of money. But let me let me bring Tony in so he can kind of give his point of view. Yeah, I mean, 100%, I think that it's not what, well, I, I'm just gonna say allegedly, uh, it, it was used for drugs, but you know, they were instructed to bring in cash. I, most of those people have contracts, their contracts will still act as uh, uh, proof for doing business with, uh, you know, Caesar. So they, they will use that and it will be binding for court. Um, but, it, you know, for most of the people that gave any type of money, whether it was cash, check or whatever, um, they're probably out of their money at this point. They filed for bankruptcy on most of their uh, entities. So right now, I just, you know, the, the victims have to come forward. They have to continue to make noise. They have to file police reports. They need to go to their banks if they use the bank. Uh, they need to report, you know, to their attorney generals. They need to just continue to make noise and, and not sit back and be quiet. Too many people have decided that they just would take the loss on the chin. And that's how these guys continue to be predators to other people. Uh, so so it, it's really at this point, man, um, mo and, and, and all, of, all of the people that have come to me, and I'll tell you, I've had a couple hundred people that have reached out to me uh, most of them have contracts, no matter if they did uh, provide cash or if they used, you know, the bank or not. But same same sentiments where where once they sent the money, uh, they they've been getting a run around, no no uh, no resolution, no end in sight. And obviously, because this thing has now you know blown up the way it has, they can't go get new money. Uh, and that's when typically the Ponzi comes to an end. I was watching the murder, uh, the uh, Bernie Madoff uh documentary on netflix and you know what typically happens is they reach out to somebody who who kind of like helps them run the ponzi and if that person can't be the whoever's like funding the pon the ponzi doesn't fund the ponzi then all shit's uphill right and that's where where these guys are now where um whoever they were doing business with uh isn't helping them and uh all these people are looking for their money they're not liquid and uh it's ugly now. Yeah, that that's a great point, and I love that. Um, I love that documentary that you're talking about, Tony. I probably watched that documentary like twelve times. That's a great point. With Ponzi schemes, normally there's somebody on the sideline that comes in when you get a lot of people who are trying to get their money out to keep the Ponzi going. Maybe there's someone that say, "Okay, hey, listen." I need some quick cash because a lot of people are asking for their returns. They're asking for their money back. I don't have it. They come in, they get enough money to make everybody whole. And then as soon as they get new investors, they get paid out again. That's why when, when DJ Envy and other people say, well, I got my money back, that doesn't mean anything. Getting your money back just means that you probably helped the situation go on longer than what it actually should have went. I mean, that's how Ponzi's go. Got two more callers, then we're going to wrap this thing up. We got Janelle. Janelle, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Hey, JT. So um, I'm a I'm a long fan, and I've been watching you for a while. Um, Thank and you. I just appreciate all that you've done for the community. You and Tony, you know, I pray for you and his family um, to keep you guys whole and safe and protected. Um, and don't forget Eli. 
Don't forget and, yeah, he, and Eli. he's taking shots at Eli too. Eli's right. been in this and he does a yes, lot of great work. Yes. So shout I'm a, out I'm to I'm Eli. A, I'm gonna put you all three of you guys and your family <laughs> in my prayers tonight because I know that what you guys doing, you know, comes at a heavy cost, and 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 I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. So, of course. You know, and I just I just want to say something real quick that I just don't appreciate, you know, all the victim blaming people coming out. Oh, why didn't they check this? Oh, wait, why didn't they check that? That the reason why this Ponzi was successful is is the that exact reason people are naive. You know, they want to they want to spend money in the culture. They don't want to go to some stiff neck, you know, stiff banker. And, you know, they want to they want to spend money in our community. First of all, and second of all, you know, they're kind of ignorant, you know, I mean, that's a real word, you know, I don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but you know, they, they don't know, you know, that, that it's impossible to get 30% times two and you know what, like what you were to explain earlier. So, you know, I just want to change the narrative of, of stop victim blaming and, and actually, you know, embrace these people you know, they were, they were the champions for our community. They were trying to keep it right in thing, yeah. yeah do the right thing and and keep the generational wealth circle going i spend money with you you know you're in my community and it's going to return mm -hmm. back and i don't know anything like like some of these people they got settlements they got you know they were given money they aren't financial savvy at all when they got right. a lot of money to invest so you know i just i just i just want to say that and i and i i pre like i said i appreciate all that you guys are doing and and those prayers are, are for real so that's all. Hey, JT, I want to jump in and just make a comment on this, JT. Go right ahead. Um, <clears throat> I think one of the misconceptions that people uh, have is that uh, most of these people were just groupies and um, not intelligent investors. Uh, I'm actually like doing business with a couple of these guys now. And you're talking about some very experienced investors that were also scammed. The reality is that people vetted these guys. They did their background checks and everything else, but they still got scammed. And, you know, a lot of people like to blame the victim, but there's people that actually are like very high level people that went through and did their due diligence, did the background checks and everything else. They saw the property. They had the property. Everything made sense as far as an investment standpoint. But you, you can't overlook the fact that if somebody has bad intent, they just have bad intent. And um, many of these people weren't just stupid people that were just giving up their money. They were actually intelligent. They actually had uh, contracts in place. They did their due diligence. They just got in business with somebody that was a bad person to do business with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's an extremely tough situation when you have influencers you have people that look like they're doing good business you have all of these things at play and you you can kind of get you, you get caught up all right last call of the night we got d d you are live on the air with pocket watching with jt what's going on hey what's going on man how you doing good man thanks for calling all right um you know what i do want to say man um this is how i feel i feel like envy is pretty much over 90 percent responsible on this end because he's a public figure uh caesar no, nobody really knew much about him right. with him vouching on the radio on a major radio platform that you know he knew this guy had a scam and passed and right. still people can get that second chance so i kind of feel like when you vouch for somebody you're supposed to hold that coin, you know, you pretty much, you know, just like if, if Tony vouches for you right. and knowing that you had something going on, which I know you guys don't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You, you kind of put yourself on the line, your credibility that's, and you, right, you that's pretty, the point. That, yeah. that, I, I'm going to let you continue, but you're making a great point. That's the yeah. point of, of, co-signing like let, let's let's break this down to financial terms just just so people understand what we're talking about if you co-sign for someone like in the streets you're co-signing for yeah. someone you can say that dj envy co-signed for uh caesar well in real financial terms if you go and your friend wants to get a car right and you co-sign because yep. they have bad credit right 
friend has bad credit. He wants to get a brand new BMW or Mercedes or whatever. He wants he, he wants a new car, but his credit's bad. But you say, hey, he's got a good job. He makes decent money. He made some bad mistakes with his money in the past. That's why he has bad credit. But I, I think he's a stand-up guy. I'm going to co-sign. Okay. Then what happens? If the friend no longer makes payments on the car, he right. falls back to his bad money management skills of his past. He stops making payments on the car. They then repo the car. The friend who co-signed, your credit is harmed. You're financially on the hook because you co-signed. You can't say, well, I didn't know he was going to flip out. I didn't know he was going to lose his job. I didn't know he was going to stop making payments. No, 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 no. You co-signed. You are on the hook. So for me, a finance guy, when you co-sign someone's credibility or whatever, you're on the hook when things go yep. bad the same way you would be on the hook if you co-sign for a person's car or buying a home or whatever it is. You're on the hook. That's that's such a great point. Please continue. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. Hey, look, I've, I've had people in my past do, do stuff to other friends. Mm -hmm. And you know what? To be honest, I covered the tab because I didn't want my friend to get hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I seen how it was going to go down. And I said, you know what? <laughs> I, I hate to do it, but, you know, your, your name, your credibility, although I didn't co-sign or nothing, you know right. what I mean? But still, out of just a moral respect, he should know better. But Envy name is starting to get plastered in a lot of different places mm -hmm. that, you know, a lot of crazy things, other th issues outside of the, the business side that I just feel like, you know, he should have really came clean and said, you know what? This got messed up. Let me give somebody something back. I mean, for everybody to call up and talk about they getting burned and doing lives, talking right. about they getting burnt. I mean, at this point, man, I don't know. If, if, me personally, if I was an investor, or the, if I see Envy at a restaurant, bro, I'm, I'm going, I'm snatching the plate, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I paid for that dinner, you know what I'm saying? This is the point I'll be at now. I'm, you know, you ain't gonna sit there and enjoy your food, and you didn't just burnt me out of two hundred thousand or something. I'm just not gonna sit there. So, yeah. you know, this is where we at now with this whole situation. But the guy Caesar, they should at least try to work something out to make at least somebody get some money back. Something, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's gonna everybody. be. It's going to be extremely tough. I appreciate you calling it. It's going to be extremely tough because as Tony already spoke on, uh, you know, Caesar and a lot of his, the entities that he controlled, he's already, you know, filed for bankruptcy. He's basically saying, you know, I ain't got it. I don't have the money. They, they It's not you can't get blood from a rock. Right. So it's 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 going to be extremely difficult for the investors to get their money back because the question is, where are they going to get the money from? And honestly, I do not personally believe that Caesar has the ability to make money legitimately in the future to pay any type of uh, funds back to the victims, even if he avoids jail time or he does have to do jail time and then come back out. He does not have the ability to generate the uh, money necessary to pay the victims back. I personally believe it's going to be most likely uh, a total loss. Yeah, I mean, it it is what it is. I just don't see them being able to uh, to come back from this. It's just it's, it's going to be ridiculous. But listen, guys, I've, I've held y'all for way too long. I appreciate it. Tony, listen, make sure y'all go and uh, subscribe to Tony the Closer. Uh, I want to make sure I put his info uh, up here. Go subscribe to Tony's info, to Eli's info, his uh, YouTube channel, the uh, Instagram. Go check them out. Go to their uh, social media posts and whatnot. Support these brothers because, listen, they did not have to do this. <laughs> they did not have to break this story. Now, this story would have came out eventually, but it probably would have went a little longer. I think there would have been more victims if Tony did not step up and really uh, create a platform for exposing what was going on, 
So, I mean, at the very least, we can do make sure that we are, you know, supporting them and doing, you know, what we can. Tony, any last words? Yeah, man. Uh, if you are a victim, make sure that you, uh, you you don't remain silent. Go and file your lawsuits. Go and file the police reports. Make your noise. Stop being silent. Just stop being a victim. You have people that are advocating for you, but we can only advocate if we know that you exist. So uh, for all the victims, make sure that you use, you know, the proper resources. If you haven't, uh, if you don't know who to reach out to, feel free to uh, DM me, Tony the Closer on IG. And uh, look forward to being able to help you guys out. All right, my brother. Thank you so much, Tony. Listen, guys. Hey, this is Pocket Watching with JT. We react to your money questions and scammer news. If you are a victim, go to my YouTube channel's uh, community tab. I have a link in there where you can report if you feel like you were scammed. You can report it to the SEC. You can do it. By giving your name or you can remain anonymous. But as long as you allow people to continue to scam, nothing is going to get any better. You have to make a report. I know it's kind of embarrassing to admit that you got scammed. I got it. I get it. But you're hurting potentially other victims that will come into the scam if you stay silent. You got to speak out, make reports, local authorities, national authorities, whatever you feel comfortable with, you got to make these reports, all right? So this is Pocket Watching with JT. Thank you guys so much. The Pocket Watcher is out. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Double check that. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Not crying, are you? Let's tighten that and... Ooh. Wait, 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 what was that? Huh? What? That? No, don't worry about that. Here we go. Asking the right question can greatly impact your future. Are you qualified to do this? What? Especially when it comes to your finances. Do you have a question? Are you a certified financial planner? Yes, I'm a CFP professional. CFP <laughs> professionals are committed to acting in your best interest. That's why it's got to be a CFP. Find your CFP professional at letsmakeaplan.org.